All right, welcome back to Elite. Dangerous. Between episodes, I did a lot of exobiology. Okay, a lot is maybe a exaggeration. But uh, anyway, I've got another 20 million to sell. I went around the area that uh, we started in and I grabbed another 20 million. Let's sell the page. And I have been promoted to mostly directionless. All right, next up, I'm gonna get back in the ship. I wanna buy a Diamondback Explorer. All right, we have uh, EDDB up. And first off, I wanted a station that sells Diamondback Explorers and a 5A frame shift drive. And the reference system is uh, Arapahoma. So at 22.39 light years, really close to the jump in point is Ving Ring. So this is the station that we're going to go to here. I'm going to set my route to here. And then we're going to use this new website, fairly new. It says new on it. Expressway to Exo Mastery, and this helps identify planets that are good to scan because manually going to each system and finding planets, even by honking the system, which is using the uh, deep space scanner, and then going to planets that say they have biologic life and surface scanning them, even that was a bit slow. Here it is. Show system connectors. That's the one that draws all these crazy lines. Can't stand them. Get rid of that. Anyway, we're going to look for, let's paste the Ving Ring. It found it in uh, back, -da -na 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 -na. but then I can just search for it here. It's right up here. Here's the system. We'll hold to set her out. And uh, we'll ha I don't have uh, uh, system data, so we'll hop here. Is this just one jump? It's two jumps, but uh, we've got a fuel start because I've got my uh, map limited, I believe. This is where I don't exactly understand how it works. This one's special because it's apply. See, it's apply filter to route. So this doesn't have to be active. See how the check mark here is active? So this is being applied to the route. This is being applied to the map. This galaxy map is complex. Anyway, we've got a route set. We'll pick back up as I'm uh, approaching the Ving Ring to buy the next ship. Ooh. I don't think I've ever seen a station that looks like this before. Well, here we are at the Ving Ring. That's really cool looking. We're going to purchase ship for 1.8 million, which is just a drop in the bucket. All right, I know equipping the ship is boring, so let's just review what I've got. I've got a 2C plasma accelerator, the gun I can't use. It could be argued that I should have no weapons whatsoever. I like to have one weapon. Utility amounts. I have a frame shift wake scanner and a heat sink launcher. I need to remember to get some heat sinks. Sinks. Core internal, 1C on the lightweight alloys, 4A on the power plant, 4A on the thrusters because this ship is all about getting away and not fighting. 5A on the frame shift drive and then D on everything else. For optional internal, we have two cargo packs. That's our two, two cargo racks, capacity 16, so that's 32. A 3A fuel scoop, 3D shield generator. I transferred this from another ship. It's smaller than the shield generator that this ship normally comes with, but it works, and it's lightweight. Another cargo rack, planetary vehicle hand hangar with the scarab installed, a detailed surface scanner because always, advanced docking computer, advanced planetary approach suite, there's the vehicle bay with the scarab, and that's it. And then uh, it's, not, it's not the perfect ship. It doesn't give me the maximum amount of range. To do that, I need a few more D modules. The rebuy on this sucker is... 616,000. It's affordable now. All right, so what this episode about is finding and scanning planets for more cash. So we are currently in the Alrai sector. I'm going to be typing this in. All right, check this out. This is the spanch.co.uk site. It's expressway to, it's route planners new expressway to exo mastery. I put in the current system we're sitting in, the uh, Alari sector, blah, blah, blah. And then I put in our starter system just because. This is the uh, where we started on the planet, Chamberlain's Rest, HIP 97950. I said my ship range is 35 light years. I said uh, the radius that's okay for me is 100 light years, and the maximum systems I want to do is 5. The maximum distance from the jump-in star, I put at about 5,600. I don't want to fly forever. And then the minimum value, 10 million. 
I hit the calculate button, which is already over here, and we see all these planets that I can scan. And uh, these things are worth 16 million, 16 million, 16 million. I don't really believe that. I don't know if they're worth that much or not, but we're going to try it. We're going to go to a few of these and see if how this works out. And then you can see the number of jumps we have to get there. Here's what's really cool. You hit show route, and uh, it takes a bit to calculate. I've already shown it here. And you get this is the route we're going. So really, I just want to get from here to here. Or is it here to here? Either way... This is going to take us around the bend, up and over and back. All right, we're here. So let me do the de-scanner. Let me actually switch mode so I have the surface scanner too. So let's look at the results. I'm going to slow down to 50% uh, speed. Let's look at the results of the de-scanner on the system map. And supposedly it's the first planet in the system. It's... Uh, Sandmus A1. So if we click on this planet, can we see? Yes. So if you click over to the third one down on a planetary information, not description, but planetary information, you see that it features seven biologicals, which is a good indication that there's something to scan. That's exactly what we want. So let's go ahead and target this. Oh, there's a lot of ports here. The frost ring and uh, some... Uh, Fleet carriers, too. We should try to land on a fleet carrier. See if they have exobio... Because they added exobiology uh, sales, whatever that store's called, to some of the fleet carriers. Might be cool to stop on one of those. Anyway, of course it's right behind us. All right. You can see the surface scanner turned blue. I'll show you my firing groups here. Are we stop? Wow. Is that thing really rotating that fast? I guess because we're close to the star. I mean, it's really spinning fast. Anyway, we look at my firing groups here. I'm on the B firing group where I have the surface scanner as the as the left mouse and D scanner as the right mouse. So let's get right into the surface scanner. This is going to be interesting. I'm only allowed two probes. It was first mapped by Vacus Cloud 609. I'm going to try to hit the back of the planet. This should be fairly easy. We'll just go here. Oh, but the planet's moving. What does this mean? And I'll go here, a little high. I don't know if they, I don't know if these probes track or not. We'll find out. We need to get the hundred percent. That's pretty good. That should be. There it is, a hundred percent. All right. Then on the little filter up top, you can use their signal filters. We've got uh, the the Cyclopeus and the Conca and the Fungoida, and some of these plants are going to be hard to find. Supposedly. Uh, Osessa discus, count one. Do I see that? I don't see any of this. I don't know. I see Slypius. No. I don't know what they're talking about. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to restrict to the one with the least coverage and backspace, by the way, to get out of this by default. I'm going to do the one with the least coverage and land near there. That's where the blue is. So I'm going to go ahead and hit C at 50%. That, that's my 50% key. I don't know what your 50% key. Boy, that seems too fast. Now, ooh, crash site threat two. You can't really see the planet like this. If you change your mode to combat mode, well, it's dark. I'd really like to land in the light, but I guess we're not. We're going to have to do this in the dark. I feel like I'm whoa coming in too fast because this this planet's really small. All right, stay out of the red. I'm gonna go to the blue. There's only a little bit of panic there. I still feel like this is too fast, but I'm back up to 50%. Now, as soon as Glide finishes, then the uh, the blue will turn off. And you'll just see the surface of the planet. Beautiful. It's night. Go to zero. And obviously, we need to turn on night mode. Boy, this is... Uh, isn't this an interesting first planet? Night vision on. Thank you. All right. Let's, uh, let's be very careful. Try not to crash. Crashing is bad. Gear deployed. Thank you. 
Unsuitable terrain? Nah, you're fine. See? You changed your mind. Lineman okay. Right next to this mountain. Excellent! We're on the ground. Alright, let's well we're gonna try a little nighttime exobiology. <laughs> let's make sure my loadout's correct. I am using the grade three Artemis suit. Let's go down to the not the fighter. Let's go down to the scarab and deploy it. The scarab also has night vision, it also has headlights though. Actually, I'm not sure if it has night vision or not. Does it have night vision? It does have night vision. Sure, it probably takes more battery, but I've never used night vision. Alright, there should be plants around here. Look at that, they're showing up in green. Look at those. Those are pretty easy to see. Uh, I'm going to go drive assist. Drive assist on. There we go. Take a short hop over here. And we'll scan these plants. Now the way the simulator works is that wherever you find plants growing, that's where they like to grow and odds are you'll find more of them in the same kind of area. So if you find plants in a valley, you probably won't find them on a mountaintop. So that is something you have to pay attention to. Alright. What happened now? I'm not going to show all of my scanning. I just wanted to show this first part to see how bad this nighttime scanning is. Yeah, thanks for the headlights. Apparently back when I knew what I was doing, I have a hotkey, Alt plus N, for night mode. Alright, this was easy. This first plant was very easy. Finding that second plant might be a little tougher. Alright, there it is. Now, are there other plants mixed in here? I don't think so. This looks to be all the same kind of plant. Okay, I'm going to attempt to go to the other side of the planet and hopefully get the blue the scanning back. I don't... I would rather not have to, uh... Rescan the planet, but I do want to work on the bright side So I'm gonna wait till the planet turns back to orange yellow whatever color you want to call it There it is, and then uh, I'm gonna make sure to slow down and then we'll orbit. We'll try to orbit There we go. That line disappears. We'll attempt to orbit. I think I blew it. I don't think we're gonna orbit There it is It's a little fast Engaged. Good. Is this good? Am I happy about this? I guess. Let's switch the mode. There. There's the bright side of the planet. Excellent. Okay. But uh, really what I want to do at this point is stop. Because I don't know how to change the signal now. I guess we'll come down and hope that I find an area with other plants. This is the bright side anyway, so... Yay. So if you decide that you're going to just skim across a planet like this, not only keep your eye on the altitude, but also listen for the engine sounds. As I get lower, you'll start to hear the engines whine, which is that landing sound. Hear that? And then the radar changes. I want to see what... I want to see what... Uh, is this just grass? Or you can park it in orbit, too. Yeah, that's just more of that same grass. So far, I haven't found any plants. I'm going to spend about five minutes doing this, and if I can't find anything else, I'm going to go on to the next planet in the list. All right, it looks like I'm going up a steep hill. We can call it a mountain, but it's steep. I'm definitely going up. Let's see if there's different plants at higher altitudes. All right, I'm way, way up on this mountain. Check this out. Look at these green splotches. I believe this is a plant. Watch watch your altitude, dude. Watch your altitude. I believe that's a plant. And they seem to be... I'm way up here. See how the terrain has changed to rocky? It rose forever, then it changed to rocky. We're in a new landscape now, and it looks like there's a different plant. Finally. This has taken a while. I Again, I think I would recommend aborting after the first one. But, you know, we f I found something. Alright, this is what it looks like when you come upon it. It's pretty, 
definitely different from the rest of the terrain. Yep. Don't land right on it. Oh, that's fine. As long as I can scan it, I'm good to go. Oh, yeah. This is one of the ones, Stratum Tectonicus, is one of the ones that's supposed to be worth 16 million. We will find out. Look at all of it over here. Yep, and I'm just running the ridge, trying to stay at the same altitude, as much as I can tell. Whoa! So check this out. I, I should slow down a little bit, but I'm getting signals on the scanner, which means there's something else available up here. I don't think I've gone far enough. But that means there's uh, usually random materials that you can mine, so I can show that in a minute. Let me try these splotches up here. I'm gonna get as far as I can. Another splotch over here. Look at all these splotches. I don't think these splotches are what's showing up on the old scanner. There is so little of this game that I've actually played. Even though I feel like I've played a lot of it and I know a decent amount, there's a lot of gameplay here that I have not done. Is it fun? Well, you know, that's, that, that's an opinion. There we go. So I'm done. I don't think I'm going to look for the third plant unless I stumble on it almost accidentally. Because I don't know, I've been in the valley, I've been on the mountain. I haven't seen any other plants here. There's only one more plant that's worth 16 million, and I have no idea where it is. But let's follow the trail of these signals. And see what these signals are telling us. Almost certain death. Aha! See the target? I have T... Whoa, 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 whoa. Slow down. You gotta explain yourself and not wreck. I have T for select target straight ahead. And if I hit T... Bronzite Chondrite. It rhymes. And uh, this is the... This was in before... Uh, Odyssey, this is some of the way you get random materials if you feel like just dune bugging around on a planet. So uh, let's switch to gun mode. See how my guns are targeted against that? So the idea in this particular gameplay is that you find this little thing, you shoot it, it breaks off into multiple things, and you collect it. All right, there it is. See that rock there? Okay, so it's targeted. I'm going to, my home key is bound to Open the cargo bay door, Hal. There, it breaks apart. Now you need a new target. See the target's flying up in the air? Holy low gravity. Alright, now the object is find a target. There's carbon. So now you go collect, collect what you got by uh, scooping it up. Collect what fell by scooping it up. There. Now another way to do it without targeting it is just go over to your contact screen. There you go. And uh, let's grab some nickel. So now it's targeted. And it has to be targeted to get into your cargo scoop. Don't ask why. So that's off to my left. Can I hit the T key? I can. There's magnanese, nanese, nanese. Let's get that one. And if I'm fast, get this one. Nice. All right. And I got some discoveries too. So if we stop, if I remember how to stop, if we stop and we go over here and we look at uh, inventory, right, this goes into your Magic Unlimited inventory. And so far I've collected carbon, geranium, iron, because I did some of this when I was hunting before. I just didn't capture it on video. Some vandium. These are materials that you can trade in a material trader for potentially other materials that you need for engineering or whatever it is that you need them for. And, you know, you can do two or three things at once if you happen upon them. And uh, so we'll see how much of these materials I have versus how much I need when I start to try to do some some uh, minor engineering. Minor engineering. Not to be confused with mining. All right, in the Abaco system, we're looking for Abaco 9A, which uh, I can try to find here. 7, 8, 9, and 9A. Look, it's a little landable planet. How about that? So that's a moon of Abaco. Abaco? Whatever. And of course it's behind me. Alright, 100%. So, Elodia, let's see. 
Elodia and Stratum are the two plants. How many plants do I have? Bacterium. Stratum. Wow, there's a lot of plants here, but only two of them are worth the big bucks. Elodia's all over the place. What are those two ships doing? Let's try to find the stratum. If I could hit this area. There's a mountain, it looks like. Valleys. Let's let's see. We'll see. Ooh, splotches too. That's probably bacteria. I don't know if I want anything to do with that those splotches. But I do see some plants. Good. Oh, I see two different kinds of plants. Maybe this this is the planet that we want. Okay. Let's let's see what we got here. So we have these. Oh, we have three maybe. So we've got this. We've got this. And then over here, I think we have another one. And then over there we have yet another one. And I'm probably oh look at that. Look at the moon over there. And I'm probably going to pick... Yeah, this is yet a different one. That looks familiar there, doesn't it? And then over here, what are these? Yeah, these are different yet again. Man, that looks scary. Alright. I'm going to start with the little cups. And watch this be a humongous mistake. But who knows? Hopefully all the plants are grouped together. This is... Yeah, and this, this green is yet another plant. And then we can do the back and forth, make lots of money. Oh, look, there's a red thing in the middle. See it? Okay, which one is this? This is Aliota. And Aliota Gravis is one of the ones supposedly worth 16 million. All right. So I'm going to stay away from the brown, the gray area, and stick to the brown. And I'll see if we can stick at this altitude, stick at this area, and see if we can find some more of these green things. Tell you what, that was easy. I'm going to retrace my tracks, and I can get probably two more plants back and forth. Because they all seem to be clumped together. Both these blobs on the ground, these plants, the grasses, and the crazy little man-eater looking plants. All right, that's that. If if this uh, route thing is correct, that's uh, 32 million right there. But uh, the old uh, dune buggy is picking up some of those rock signals up there, so I can I can pick up some of those rocks as well. And then I'm gonna go ahead and scan one of these, whatever these are. That is Silepius lac. And that is not on the list. But I'm going to do it anyway. But I'm going to check out, since we're over here, I'm going to check out the rocks that are showing up. And then we'll go back this way. So that direction is about 110, 120, 130, 140-ish. Just, I'm just up and down this ridge. This planet, I'm telling you. If, if you need a planet to go to after the starter system, this is the planet. Because it's just a simple back and forth. It's uh, Aabico 9A. All right, you can see one of the th one of the signals is showing up now on the radar, but I've been passing plants up the whole way. So this is this is a great way to get two things done at once. Here's another one of these goofy plants. It'll be interesting to see how much those are worth. And unfortunately, you can't shoot it with just your gun. I don't think. I could try. Doesn't it make you want to try? Because this was in Horizons. Alright, you know what? I'm going to try. Just for the heck of it, I'm going to try just to shoot it with the gun. Just a little shotgun. Oh, it worked! But now, can I pick these up? Not so much. But it worked. You can shoot it with your... with your regular gun. Whoa! Alright, cool. But then I have to pick them up with the dune buggy. Here it is, right there. Alright. Not the most efficient way to do things. But hey! I've got stuff, and before I didn't have stuff. 
All right. Let's stop. I've got the Artemis suit back on. Let's One disembark. This should be the third scan of this crazy looking plant, I think. So now, the grass is the last one, I believe. Yeah, it, it turned color because I was I had an ongoing scan. All right, the grass is the last one. It's a little different. Tussock triticum. That's definitely not on the list. All right, I'm gonna keep going, search for two more of those, and then uh, I'm gonna look for a place to sell these. Ooh, look at this fleet carrier. Hey, I can dock here. All right, cool. I couldn't dock at the first one I tried. You never know why. It could be that they didn't pay for it. it could be that it's docking for friends only, which maybe is why they parked it way out there. Who knows? All right, can I get out? Because supposedly this is new too. You cannot disembark inside uh, craters. Look, you get your custom name on it. Xenomortem supplies. These are all player run. It takes gazillions. Um, you have to buy it, but... Uh, yeah, look at this. Okay, we got any stores here. Service suspended. Yeah, so this has been my experience with fleet carriers, is that it sounds like a great idea, but every time I try to use one, the service has been suspended. We're going to Gooch. Gooch Terminal. This will have everything that we need. All right, while we're in Gooch, can I sell anything at the Universal Cartographics? I can't. So just by uh, thunking all these sectors, it's not a lot, not bad. Which gives me the most? This one. Because I scanned a water world on this one. When I was doing the first loop between episodes, I found a water world. These are worth a ton of money, even if they're in a known system. I just surface scanned it, so that gives me $2 million. I'm going to sell all the data, sell the page for $2.8 million. I'm promoted to a surveyor. Explorer rank, how about that? My balance is 14.9 million. I can sell the page for 78 million. 78 million. 600,000 if you're counting pennies. So San Mus was that planet I was just on. No, Aabico was the planet I was just on. And sure enough, all right, there's some, there's the stratum... Succumus, 16.2 million. The Alito Gravis was only 12.9, and it promised me it was 16.7. So these values do change from time to time, but that's still good. The Tussock was 7.7, and the uh, whatever this is was 8.4. Not bad. And then the other planet, uh, San Mus, this is the one where it took me forever to find stuff. But you know, you know, the Tussock was worth less than... No, the Tussock wasn't on the list at all. The Stratum Tectonic was supposed to be worth 16.7. It was actually worth 19, because the game felt sorry for me. So that, I have been recording this episode for three hours. Let's call it... I think I wasted a full hour of just doing other things. So let's call it two hours. That's 78 and a half million for two hours worth of work. I don't think you can make money any other way. And I've been promoted to a compiler. Is she smiling? I know, I'm happy too. I'm pretty Thank much famous. Contribution to our research. Yeah, you're welcome. Pretty much famous. I don't know what I'm going to do with all this money, but there you go. And I can continue the route. I'm going to go ahead and continue. I think um, Abiko 9A in the AIBIKO system, that's the one to go to because that's the easiest. The other one, the San Mus, would have been easy if I just got the ship out and went to a different area. You got to, you know, you got to, I, I don't know if I can explain it now that I'm just an expert exobiologist, you know, to all you noobs. <laughs> I'll try anyway. Wow, I'm pretty rich. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you later. Close your eyes.